Hey everyone, in this video I'm drawing the interior of a comic shop where the characters in the image are playing a card game similar to Magic the Gathering. I've got to convey the nerdiness of the characters and make it look like the shop is crowded with other games going on in the background. There's a lot of detail in the background of comic book shops that I could include, but I've got to keep things moving in order to finish these 15 RPG illustrations for the Mystic Punks game. So I'm going to make the background suggest detail and keep it pretty abstract. So I'm going to use suggested detail in the background and keep it pretty abstract. Benjamin Mara here, illustrator and cartoonist. Welcome to my channel where I record my process and give insights about art projects I'm working on with the hope you'll learn new techniques and be inspired when making your own art. So as I usually do, I'm starting out with outlines of the main artwork. I'm just working off of the sketch, which is what I usually do. I don't like to fully pencil, as I've stated in other videos. Just trying to get a sense of this character's identity within the inks itself. I have an idea who he is from just sketching him out, but now with the inks, I'm really nailing down who he is. So I would like these big Coke bottle glasses and a bunch of acne on his cheeks. I want his ears to be different from the other guy's ears as well. It's a bit of a cartoony caricature type thing of what comic shop regular looks like. Of course, putting acne on the forehead as well. I know from experience what acne all over one's face feels like. I had a bunch when I was a teenager. I was also a frequenter of comic book stores too. I never played Magic the Gathering until I was much older though and tried to give it a shot. Just was curious about how to play it. I'm giving this guy some pens in his pocket. No pocket protector though going in and working on his arms. I figure that the light in the comic shop is going to be pretty bright, so the shadows aren't going to be too dramatic. They're going to be pretty straightforward shadows, nothing too insane or exotic, I guess, for shadow work. I'm adding some shadows as I go through and do the outlines. A lot of the time I save the bulk of the shadows for when I've already outlined all the characters. Because I think the shadows aren't going to be too extreme, I'm kind of figuring them out as I do the outlines. I figure that the type of lighting in this establishment is just squares in the drop ceiling. Just those rectangle fluorescent bulb lights that you see in a lot of industrial buildings. To do the table, I'm dropping in this grid that I like to use. Doing the cast shadow on the nerd's legs here. I don't want to use the grid or the for the table to be too precise with the lines. I could use a ruler to create perfect lines for the table, but I don't want to have the table be too perfect. I want the line to be a little uneven. I also just hate using rulers in general. Onto the next nerd here, looking and observing his friends playing the card game. I'm not sure exactly where I got the idea for this character. I wanted each of the guys sitting at the table to be pretty unique and have their own weird nerd design to make them individual or you know not the same as the other ones. I think this guy's design was inspired by either Alfred E. Newman or whatever the character is that is the mascot for Cracked Magazine. I give him kind of like a Freddy Krueger sweater. Just doing the simple outlines here for nailing down the shapes for this character. I want his hair to be kind of a mess, like it's something that he hasn't really attended to. I imagine him as a redhead. I think it's good to think of your drawings in color, even if it's going to be black and white. I think it just helps inform what kind of shadows you're going to lay down, because everything is really just about values, even with black and white, and even with color. There are different values for different colors, just the same as there's variations on gray and black and white. I want the chairs to be really simple. Chairs are always kind of tough to design, so I keep mine relatively simple. I just want them to read as a chair, something that a comic shop would drag out of a closet in the event of a bunch of card games going on. 
Now I'm dropping in the card shapes here, adding a little bit of perspective to the cards to give the indication that this table is receding into the picture plane. But I'm just eyeballing this perspective. I don't really like to work with perspective grids unless I absolutely have to. I figured that I get just as good a, res a result if I'm eyeballing it and save myself a large amount of time. Since I played Magic the Gathering a couple of times, I'm able to kind of set up what a card game of that kind of variety would look like on the table, how it might be set up. It's pretty basic. I don't have any cards turned any different angles or anything, or cards laying on top of one another except for in there in the morgue. Now I'm onto the third and final game player at the table. I want his fingers to look pretty sausagey, even though his arms are relatively skinny next to his large body. I gave him kind of like a school uniform, or maybe he's someone who just likes to get dressed up to go play card games with his friends. I want all of their noses to look very different. Everything about each of these nerds, I want them to have a different kind of look. I'm adjusting his jaw line or cheek line there. giving him a little bit of a mullet here. I want him to have kind of a wacky haircut, maybe semi flock of seagulls. Maybe he just parts it a bit too much. Actually, looking at this now, he kind of reminds me of Nelson from The Simpsons. Keeping this drawing relatively simple, I don't want it to be too crazy because the location of this drawing isn't so insane, it's not so fantastical, so I think the drawing shouldn't be too fantastical either. It should look kind of pedestrian to kind of support the pedestrian nature of a comic book shop. What I'm doing here is I'm just taking the back of the one chair and flipping it so I can use it on the other end and not have to redraw the perspective and then just go in and erase whatever I don't need. It's a pretty handy trick in Clip Studio and other digital inking programs, I'm sure. I just want to get the cards to have indication of detail on them, like certain information, maybe a picture, but I don't have to go in too heavily. People aren't going to be studying these images too much when they're playing the game, but I want for sure to give them, give the readers or the players of the game, a sense of what these locations are without having to spend an enormous amount of time on them. So in the background here, I'm just going to do some silhouettes of players at other tables. I'm going to keep them mostly just as figures in shadow. Since it's a comic book shop, I figure I have to put in some shelves for the comics that are on the stands currently. I think that this is a pretty common sort of shelving unit that you'd find at any comic book store. And then I'm dropping in some abstract shapes to suggest the covers, cover art, and title without having to go into too much detail. I just want to keep all the detail in the background of this drawing to be pretty abstract, just impressions of what these objects might look like in the store. I want the focus to be primarily on the three figures in the foreground.
Now I'm adding this wall, which I figure is where the front window of the store is located. There's probably some posters there. Again, just eyeballing the perspective. If it looks close enough, it's, it works, I think. Putting some more stickers and decals on the front door. The room is just going to be a simple box shape, obviously, just to let readers know that this is a single room of a comic shop. Now I'm going to put some posters on the wall here. Comic book shops are just filled with so much signage and branding and imagery. It's pretty overwhelming, actually, when you think about it. I like to keep the detail of an area or a background like this to be pretty abstract. So just dropping in some posters of some comic book covers, comic book posters. Pretty familiar with seeing them my whole life from going into comic book stores myself. I just want to put these abstract forms in place to suggest a title and figures. Now I've got the basic outlines, most of the shadows down. I'm just going to put in some brushy lines here for the figures that are existing deeper into the space, deeper into the comic book store, deeper within the room. Now I'm going to add some screen tones to the uh, figures in the background just to give them a bit of shadow. The screen tones add some kind of depth of field. Now I'm going to add the screen tones to the characters in the foreground. In retrospect, I think I should have used a different screen tone for the figures in the foreground than in the background. This is one of my favorite things to do is use the spray paint brush to blend in some of the screen tone in the background. So here I'm trying to find a different kind of screen tone that I can use for the foreground characters just to add a little bit to their faces, figuring that their acne is probably red or pink of some kind. And I want to indicate that on their faces using the screen tones. Then I drop in some screen tones to support some of the gray areas, the areas in shadow in the foreground that aren't totally black shadow. Forgot one area of the table here, the support that was on the other side, so I'm carving out of the shadow. I'm not so happy with how the shadows are working on the legs of the player on the left, so I'm just redoing that. And this is the final. I really like how the stippling in the background works to fade the screen tones into nothing. I think that's really successful. Overall, this is a fine image. I think it does the job. I'm not super wild about it, but again, I don't have time to really make every image uh, A+. Plus. I'll go for B+. Plus. That'll be just fine. As long as the image is serviceable, I'm happy with it. I gotta keep moving forward. It's sort of like in comics. You just have to keep moving forward. Thanks for watching everyone. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions about what I've been working on or anything I've mentioned in the video, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. See you in the next video.